the Steam Next Fest is upon us. For those not familiar with the Steam Next Fest, it's a celebration of upcoming games. Literally, hundreds of demos to try. There's also a ton of developer live streams if you're interested. That said, these are demos, and so these don't have official Steam Deck verification ratings. Some demos represent work in progress games. So between the demo and the full release, games are subject to change. So let's get started. The first game I want to cover is Slave Zero X, a stylish 2D character action game much in the vein of Strider. The art style is very reminiscent of something like Genocyber or Giver, which is awesome because both of which are a bloody good time. The game has gorgeous 2D sprite animations. This, in conjunction with what seems like PS1 inspired backgrounds, makes the game stand out even amongst its contemporaries. The combat system is really nice as well. You have a variety of different attacks that can link together to make combos. If you're a true combo fiend, this game is definitely up your alley. The only unfortunate thing is that the game doesn't tell you how it works, so you'll either need to learn out the mechanics yourself or read this official guide guide by the developers. And if you're watching this developers, having an in-game explanation of the systems really does help, even if it is just an image that just tells you all the controls. I recommend trying this game out. The game works well on Steam Deck, though from time to time you can see that occasionally it'll stutter, and at times the frame rate becomes kind of unstable. I do hope the developers can sort this out by the time the full game releases. Next up is Christeris, or Christ Arise? I don't know how to pronounce this. You play as... Actually, I don't even know that much. So you play as this girl that lives on a sky island. To further build up your sky island, you descend into the ground below. You gather resources and fight monsters, and explore caves. It's an interesting concept, and it does work on Steam Deck, with full controllers part of that too. You don't really have a sense of direction or even where to go, really. So for the time being, you're just exploring this vast open area, this wide open world. You can use your resources that you scrounge up to not only expand your island, but also build more facilities on top of it. From what I've played of the demo, I already quite like it but I really have to explore the demo more to see what this game is really all about. That said, I really do enjoy the art style. There is one thing that this game could fix, the very sluggish aiming on the right stick. It feels like you're moving a mouse cursor as opposed to rotating your character. It should be seamless and natural like on a twin stick shooter, but it takes a bit to turn your character around and aim, so I hope they fix that in the future. Next up is Die by the Blade. Unlike some of the other demos on this list, this is actually a multiplayer demo, though you can also fight against AI opponents as well. You have a variety of characters and unique weapons to choose from. This is a more unique fighting game in which a single blow could easily kill you if you're not careful. One well-placed swing could decapitate your opponent. It's got a guard system that's very reminiscent of something like For Honor. It's certainly not the flashiest fighting game out there. You'll have to play extra carefully to not get immediately killed by some enterprising player, or in this case, the AI. It's a battle of wits, and the game actually looks pretty decent all things considered. Definitely do the tutorial, as well as change your graphical details if you want to run this on Steam Deck well. You'll want this to run as close to 60 FPS as possible. Next on this list is Void Train. So immediately before you start Void Train, you'll want to change the graphical details. I didn't really benchmark the game per se, but I had some good results on all medium graphical details. You are in space, and also on a train. You start off with a crappy little trolley, and the game takes a bit to get into, but it's a highly unique experience. One that I haven't really seen in other games. Zero Gravity Train Simulator with guns. You also do explore some facilities, though I haven't really played enough of this to really make a good review on this, but from what I've played, I already quite like it. This demo is also multiplayer as well. Next up is Dungeon Drafters. Dungeon Drafters is a roguelike turn-based card game in which you explore various dungeons and you progress through them. You have access to a basic melee attack, but you also have access to special cards depending on what characters you have. The full game will feature the ability to customize your character's decks with booster packs that you find on the ground. But for this demo, you have a number of preset decks, one per character. Currently, there's an issue with controller support, so you have to use keyboard and mouse inputs to get this to work on your Steam Deck. In the future though, this game will have full controller support. This is Super Raft Boat Together, a roguelike, but on a boat, or rather, a really crappy raft. In the demo, you have access to four different characters, each with their own unique weapon type. Being that I'm a massive Disgaea fan, I chose the penguin because, you know, because Prinnies, dude. The gameplay loop is fairly simple. You're on a raft. 
and you defend your raft, and you build it up as well. There are enemies and rocks that can tear up your raft, so you should be extra careful. There's a constant struggle trying to balance between killing enemies and building up your raft. And believe me, building up your raft is very important, especially if you want more room to dodge attacks. The game is already very fantastic, but with standard dual trackpad controls, I could see some issues with accurately building. Thankfully, the Steam Deck has trackpads. This next game is called Grim Guardians Demon Purge. This is a 2D action platformer where you control two characters, the Kamizono sisters, Shinobu who uses an arsenal of long-range weaponry, and Maya who is a close-range fighter. You can tag them in and out at will. It definitely reminds me of Castlevania, and boy does this game feel great. The game isn't strictly non-linear, though there are places you can go out of your way once you unlock upgrades. But of course, you can't really do so right now because it's a demo. There are also bosses to face, and this right here is probably the most Castlevania boss I've ever seen. Inti creates has shown why they're a master at their craft, which is 2D action games. And would you believe this game is based on this franchise? This next game is Pocket Mirror, Golden or Trom. This is an RPG Maker horror game. The menu looks nothing like a standard RPG Maker game. This game is entirely about solving puzzles. It's always difficult to evaluate these types of games, especially if they only come in a demo form. But from what I see, I like it. It's dark, it's gory, and most importantly, it freaks you the hell out. There is a mode to assist you with these puzzles in case these are too complex for you to understand. I do like the game's art style. Ultimately, this is a difficult game to judge. There are a lot of treacherous areas and choices to make, and if you make the wrong choices or perhaps make the wrong moves, you will die. Oftentimes, very messily and very horribly. Is this game for the faint of heart? Probably not. Fun fact, Valve's official partner in Japan, Komodo, you know, the ones that bring the Steam Deck to Japan, heavily featured this game as part of its marketing campaign, which is pretty neat. Does that mean any Komodo game is a first-party Steam Deck game? Probably not, right? Right? This next game is called Fake Heart, an interactive visual novel with a unique art aesthetic, black and white with splashes of color here and there. What separates this from most other visual novels that you find on Steam? Well, for starters, the visual style is very distinct from most visual novels out there. It feels like a natural evolution of what visual novels could become, putting more of an emphasis on the visual part of visual novels. I can appreciate good cinematography in a video game, and visual novels tend to have none. But this one has some really good cinematography. Really great establishing shots. Unfortunately, I came across what seems to be a pretty severe issue with this game. In this game, there are sequences where you can text and choose responses to certain text messages. But for whatever reason, this window is all messed up. I sure hope the devs can fix this when it comes time to launch the game. This is a very big leap forward towards what visual novels could be in the future. In my opinion, at least. More focus on the cinematography side of visual novels. Hopefully in the future we'll get some voice acting, but if not, that's fine as well. This next game on the list is called Wandering Sword. Taking place at the end of the Zhou Dynasty, you take the role of Yuan Yi, a young Chinese swordsman that was caught up in a feud and nearly escaped with his life. The game looks gorgeous and it looks very reminiscent of something like Octopath Traveler, with its blend of 2D pixel art and modern lighting technology. Classic JRPG combat is instead replaced with a grid-based system. Depending on what weapons you equip and what martial arts you learn, you can learn a variety of different techniques. At least, that's how it's supposed to be in the main game. The game is a spin on classic wuxia storytelling, with elements of heroism, martial prowess, honor, and political intrigue. If you're a fan of wuxia, be sure to give this game a shot. The only real issue I have with this game is that it doesn't support controller. You can definitely use Steam input to define your controls, but when it comes to games like GRPGs, I feel way more comfortable with having actual controller support. The final game on this list is Dark and Darker. Someone once described this to me as kind of like Tarkov except medieval, and honestly, I've never played Tarkov before. So the gist of this game is, you go into caves with multiple different players. You go in there and find loot and equip it, and then use it, and hopefully, if you make it out alive, that loot is yours to keep. If you bring in any loot and die though, you permanently lose it. You contend not only with monsters, but with players as well. You can team up with other players as well, but there's nothing explicitly stopping them from stabbing you in the back. There's also nothing stopping you from stabbing them in the back in case you see a shiny that they took. Having never played an extraction shooter before, I can say that this makes the game surprisingly engaging. You deal with dangerous monsters like goblins and giant spiders. And when it comes to other players, you never know who to trust. It's not a matter of if they'll betray you, but when, and if you should betray them first. I have to wonder how this game will affect you if you have actual trust issues in real life. 
I've been following the Steam Next Fest for quite some time now. I covered the Steam Next Fest because they represent what could be the future of gaming. What really makes the Steam Next Fest so special is that many of these games, if not all of these games, have demos that you can try out. Demos to sink your teeth into. There are a ton of games I probably would have never bought if not for the fact that I tested them out in a Steam Next Fest, like Depersonalization. You still have plenty of days to try out all of these demos and way more. I've tried out a bunch of demos, but these are 10 that I specifically wanted to cover. But who knows, maybe I'll find some other demo that I'll regret not putting in this video. But if I ever come to a situation like that, I'll probably just make it a YouTube short. Yeah, YouTube short would fix everything, so be sure to check out my YouTube shorts. In the meantime though, the Steam Pals are cooking up yet another video for this month. And like before, I'll be working with some of your second and third and fourth and fifth favorite content creators. Cause we all know I'm your favorite, right? If you like high tech lowlife, you should check out the rest of my channel. And if you like the rest of my channel, you should like, subscribe, and spread the good gospel of high tech lowlife. Furthermore, we have a community discord server. There's a link in the description down below. Check us out.